much. Um, I will now recognize Mr. Gonzalez for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you to the witnesses for being here today and for your attention and, and testimony. Uh, in my home state of Ohio, we have tremendous research institutions uh, that are always at the forefront of innovation. And I, I want to turn my question to the role academic institutions play in weather forecasting. Uh, Dr. Chen, what role, in your opinion, should academic researchers play in helping the U.S. to improve its poor position in weather modeling? And can you tell us a bit more um, about how the institution should play more broadly? Thank you, Mr. Donald. That's a great question. Um, we have been uh, really wrestled with this question for a long time. Academia, uh, we play an important role in several fronts. First, most, um, the innovative research has been done at university <coughs> level and academia, broadly speaking. Mm -hmm. Um, has always been the forefront in the world, and a lot of research product we're very proud of, eager to put them into useful um, tools for operations. This has been a unmet challenge that I have mentioned. Um, second, the uh, academia have a key role to play for training the future workforce. The need for impact forecast and how people respond to forecast. It's very much interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary research. And this require our current workforce to be up to date in terms of both computing, uh, management, and there's a lot of an interface between physical science and uh, uh, the uh, social science. We are very active in terms of promoting that multidisciplinary research education to prepare for the workforce to meet the challenge. So this part of the academic uh, community really taking this very seriously. Although we still have a challenge, we would like to reform our system to meet the current technology and the science advances. Thank you. Uh, and Dr. Cellini, uh, given we are in the cusp of new technologies being implemented across different, different applications and parts of our economy, uh, I'm curious to know what you see the future role of artificial intelligence and machine learning at the National Weather Service. Uh, and Mr. Sorkin, if, if you could um, talk about it more related to your industry after uh, he's done. Well, I, I think it's going to have a major role. And, um, and there's a lot of potential um, in, in utilizing that to assist uh, decision making, both in terms of um, accessing the data and quality control. Um, extracting information from numerical models, uh, whether they're the single runs or the ensemble runs. Uh, in fact, there's no way possible for any human being to extract the, uh, all the information out of the myriad of ensemble model runs that we access today. And then in the, um, in the probability aspects, in terms of how you affect the decision at key decision points, I think it'll be uh, helpful there as well. I, I do want to emphasize that um, all these systems are, are better utilized as they're assisting decision making uh, by a human being. And, and that's um, something that I think so, uh, sometimes gets lost uh, in the enthusiasm for artificial intelligence. Absolutely. Right. Mr. Sorkin. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Jupiter uh, uses a combination of dynamical modeling uh, as is prevalent in the uh, weather enterprise uh, AI and other uh, forms of modeling. One of the benefits of our cloud-based architecture uh, or infrastructure is the ability to compare the results of a dynamical modeling and AI approach uh, side by side in the same modeling chain. We essentially can substitute one, see how it performs uh, versus the other, both in terms of the uh, accuracy of the predictions when tested against ground truth data, the overall compute load, uh, and the explainability of the results, which in certain regulated industries is also critical. And um, uh, I would say um, that overall pri the private sector in most other domains is much further ahead, primarily because of the amount of uh, investment in AI than the weather enterprise generally. Got it. And then if you could, um, how do you feel we're doing relative to China uh, on this particular front? Specifically within the weather enterprise? Uh, specifically AI machine learning, uh, so generally. Historically, the United States has been a leader 
in AI and machine learning. Uh, the Chinese are um, uh, catching up very rapidly. They have fewer constraints on the use of uh, consumer data, which in some cases is an advantage uh, in uh, further progress on the whole. I think the United States is still ahead. Uh, however, uh, it's an area that definitely requires very careful attention by the federal government and the private sector on an ongoing basis. And in addition to that, uh, I would emphasize the importance of protecting the country's intellectual property, something the president has given um, substantial attention to recently. And that is a critical issue for Silicon Valley and the country generally. Excellent. Thank you. And I yield back.